Today's topic is gonna be juicy. <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to our channel. Today I'll be talking about a topic that really hits home for me because of course I wear the hijab. I've been wearing it since I was nine years old and it is a huge part of my life. Um, in fact, I would go as far as claiming it as truly part of my identity, like I fully identify as a Muslim woman that wears a hijab more than anything. Um, so I really wanted to do this topic not only because a lot of you guys requested it, but also because I think as a content creator that is also a Muslim that wears a hijab, that has a pretty good following, and I feel like I have a pretty good connection to you guys in this community that we've created, and I feel like that holds a responsibility. I almost feel like a big sister to you guys, and I want to be able to give you guys advice on the hijab. Perhaps the way that I look at hijab can help one of you guys, and if it helps at least one person, it's worth it to me. So I I figured I would make this video about a super hot topic right now, which is a bunch of influencers, influencers, <laughs> um, taking off the hijab, and we've been seeing it a lot. It's almost become, it almost feels like a trend now because there's so many of them that have done it. And at first it was just a few and it was like a shock factor. But I also feel like people got over it and moved on and then it started to trickle like another one and another one and another one. DJ Cat, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> but basically there were just so many that followed afterwards and it felt like every single week there was like a new announcement of another hijab wearing content creator or influencer that that essentially took off their hijab even as a content creator myself it shocks me to see it i instantly go whoa like did this person post a picture by accident without a hijab and then i read the caption and it says new me same person but <laughs> Sorry. i just find it funny how all of their captions are pretty much the same but anyways, I'm fully in this industry and I still find it shocking anytime I hear that this happens. Um, so I can only imagine how the followers of these people are feeling, especially the ones that really connect to that person because of their Muslim identity. I know that a lot of us follow influencers or content creators or famous people because we connect with them on in a certain way and a lot of us connect to these influencers because they are Muslim and they wear the hijab and they carry out a lifestyle that is similar to ours or something that we aspire to be or whatever the case may be and it can be very shocking to find someone that you've been following along with that just kind of flips 180 and takes a different direction in life especially if they were your inspiration it kind of makes you think like whoa what was I following or was everything that I was following not true? Or how do I feel about my hijab now? Like it just makes you question things, I think. I know a lot of us try to think that we don't get affected by these things, but I think to a certain degree, all of us get affected by these things. Um, at the end of the day, this is our community. What one person does in our community may not directly affect us, but when it becomes like, a constant thing and a lot of people doing it, it definitely does get to you at one point. It's definitely something that should be addressed and should be talked about and should be discussed so that we are all on the same page, so that we can all check in on each other, so that we can all kind of, you know, have like a sister-sister talk and I think, I think it can be really beneficial to a lot of us. So let's just start off by discussing what's been happening. So if you guys don't know or not in the loop or you're not on Instagram or whatnot, because that's usually where it happens, it's on Instagram. A lot of influencers and content creators have been taking off their hijab recently and I'm not here to call anyone out. Um, honestly, honestly, this video is not meant to address them. It's meant to address the people that are seeing it, so the followers, you guys. Um, I'm here to help you guys and kind of talk to you guys rather than talk to them or about them um, because I am in no place to judge anyone. Um, I have my own mistakes that I would not appreciate someone talking about. Um, I have my own sins that I do not appreciate someone discussing. So I'm here to address you guys because I feel like a lot of the times when these things happen, all the focus is on the influencer that does this rather than how this impacts the followers and how this impacts the Muslim community, especially the younger girls that are still developing their identity as a, as a hijabi or as a Muslim girl or whatever the case may be. So 
I just want to clear that up that I'm not here to talk about anyone specific. This video is not addressed to anyone specific. This is literally for you guys. Coming from a hijab wearing influencer, I just want you guys to get a different perspective on the hijab. I know that a lot that we've been seeing in the hijabi industry is people taking it off, but I also want to show you a side how hijab can be something really, really beautiful. And it's not always the struggle and the hardship and the the disadvantage that it gets portrayed even in a, within our own community. But anyways, so a lot of influencers have been taking off the hijab. You'll see a lot of support saying like, queen, you're beautiful, you do you, no one can judge you but God, um, you're beautiful with and without it. And then you'll see like comments saying like, I'm really disappointed that you did this. Um, uh, I used to follow you because I enjoyed your content as a Muslim woman that wore a hijab and now you've left that part and I can't connect to you. There's also comments that say, um, that go as far as say like, you've used this community and then left it. So you basically got famous off of the hijab and um, hijab fashion and then you kind of like abandoned us. Um, I've been seeing a lot of those kind of comments too so there's definitely a mixed reaction anytime that happens and I think the more it happens the more influencers that take off the hijab there's like I guess people are like oh there goes another one you know like we've come to the point where it's just like okay it's expected that another one of us is gonna take off the hijab and that's to me that is so so sad that it's come to that point where I've even gotten messages saying like, oh, can't wait for you to be next. Or I've been tagged in like some of these influencers that have taken off their hijab. I've been tagged by followers in their comments um, saying, can't wait for at Jasmine Ferris to be next and along with other influencers that they've tagged. And to be honest with you, it's just really upsetting that people um, kind of expect this now and are waiting for it to happen. And it's also upsetting that people would include me in that. Um, I know that it can seem like every other influencer is taking off their hijab, but please don't group everyone in the same kind of bundle. It doesn't work that way. Um, we're not all the same. I know it may seem like that, but keep in mind that the people that you're seeing online that are taking off their hijab are literally 1%, not even 1% of the hijabis out there, um, not only on social media, but outside of social media. So you're just seeing literally like not even one percent of the community and you're basing every other hijabi content creator off of those actions and that's not right even with my other content creator friends they've that are hijabis as well have been saying that they've been getting a lot of dms saying i can't wait for you to be next or something like that i see you taking off your hijab or all that kind of stuff just because i i get the, i get why those questions are coming in it's just because it feels like every other hijab is going to take off their hijab now but it can also be really hurtful and damaging to accuse someone of that or to expect expect that of someone because that person may be struggling with hijab already and your comment doesn't do any better. Just be careful with how you talk to people. At the end of the day, I know it feels like you're talking to like a huge celebrity or whatever, but all these content creators check their DMs, they check their comments, they see what you're saying. Um, all your hate gets to them even if they try to act like they have thick skin we're human at the end of the day and your word out of all the words that they've seen or heard or whatever could affect them the most you don't know maybe it's just your word that affected them so don't be responsible for that don't put yourself in that position be kind to people around you even if it feels like things are going haywire just try to be kind um, that's the best thing that you can do at the end of the day so now that I kind of gave you guys an idea of what's going on in the hijabi industry um, I can go ahead and talk about how I feel about it so for me at the end of the day anytime I see this happen I always say well you know what it's their choice it's between them and God I'm not getting judged for their actions they're not getting judged for my actions at the end of the day that used to be my um, my perception and my idea of what was going on and it still kind of is but I have also a different kind of opinion on it now a little bit different just because I've kind of reflected on it and I've realized that and I've tried to put myself in the consumer's position, so like the follower's posi position or the follower's perspective. As a content creator, that can be kind of difficult because we're always on like this side of the spectrum where we're creating content and whatever, and we're rarely ever absorbing content because if I'm quite honest with you, I spend very little time on Instagram going through my feed. 
I spend more time working on my own content than seeing other people's content. And I think I speak for many content creators. We tend to like look through inspo and that kind of stuff, but we rarely like, I don't know, I rarely stay super connected other than like stories. I kind of watch those all the time, but in terms of scrolling through my feed, I don't do that often. So I don't see a lot of people's content. So I'm not very in tune with everyone. But as a follower, someone that isn't a content creator on this side of the spectrum, I feel like you guys are always exposed to content and messages and all these kind of things on Instagram because you guys, your role in the spectrum is to kind of scroll and absorb and you know, and all the messages are basically coming at you because you're, you're the recipient, right? So I kind of had to step back and reflect on how the follower views this because I started seeing all these comments underneath these influencers pages of when they took off the hijab. I started seeing all the comments and a lot of comments were angry. A lot of comments were disappointed. Some were threatening. Um, some were inappropriate. Some were supportive. Some were happy. Some were, I don't know, like there was just a whole bunch of uh, responses. I kind of understand from a follower's perspective how disappointing it can be and I totally get that. But what I don't get is why some people feel the need to bash the person or threaten them or threaten their families. I've seen that a lot and that to me is just crossing the line and completely disrespectful. Um, in an Islamic perspective, there is no room for that. There is no room for threatening someone. There is no room for um, bashing someone publicly like that. There is no room for disrespecting people based on the actions that they've decided to take personally. Um, so I definitely think that there's a line that's being crossed which needs to be addressed. Um, if you have something that's not so nice to say, think about it, absorb it, kind of reflect on it and try to reword it in a way that's more beneficial to the person you're trying to advise because at the end of the day, I say this all the time, if your advice is done in a harsh and mean manner, no matter how great your advice is, no matter how true your advice is, it's not going to be received by the person you're trying to advise. And that just defeats the purpose. The whole point of advising someone is for them to receive the advice and take it and roll with it. If your advice is being sent in a harsh manner and that person just blocks you out, what's the point of your advice? We always say like in Islam, we should be promoting good and forbidding evil. And if you think that it's your responsibility to advise this person to forbid evil and to kind of get them on the right path, but you're doing it in a harsh manner, your message is like, invalid you know it's a, it doesn't get across you're doing it in a harsh way and your whole point of the whole point of trying to better that person is not going to be achieved right so i just have that little bit of advice if you feel kind of weird about the situation and you have some advice to say um definitely message privately i would recommend messaging privately do not do it on a public post or a public comment Think about it yourself. If you were in that person's shoes, would you want to be addressed publicly? Um, let's say you did a mistake. Would you want someone to come on and on a microphone and be like, Hey Sarah, I heard you were at the club last night. You wouldn't want someone to publicly shame you or publicly advise you like that. Again, I still stand by the fact that it is their choice. It is up to them. It's a personal choice. But I also do understand that because they have a platform, it becomes something that involves a lot of other people um, because they have chosen to display bits and parts of their life on the internet. So um, a lot of people are used to already commenting on their lives with or without the hijab and um, putting such a big change, such a drastic change up on the internet as well is definitely going to generate some sort of opinion and everyone and we all know that people have different opinions and some are great some are not so i understand both sides for sure but i do really gotta admit that it's definitely it definitely saddens me to see a lot of um, muslims leaving the hijab and um, choosing to not wear it anymore especially after wearing it for so many years the hijab is truly truly part of my identity alhamdulillah i haven't had any trouble with the hijab and I know that not many people can say that. I know hijab can be a struggle. And don't get me wrong, although I say that hijab has been great for me, alhamdulillah, I definitely have still had struggles throughout the 14 years that I've been wearing the hijab. Um, so it definitely has not been like a walk in the park 
all of those years. I went through phases where it was a little harder and then phases where it was a lot easier. Alhamdulillah, my downs have definitely like not been significant enough where I wanted to take it off, like nowhere even near. Um, it was just like normal struggles, like normal self-esteem struggles and trying to like even when you're a teenager and you're forming your identity as a teenager, but not only are you doing that, but you're also forming your identity as a Muslim teenager, a Muslim wearing the hijab. Um, in like a Western society, there's just so many factors that impact how you grow up and it can make it very difficult to acquire your identity growing up, um, especially with that added factor of wearing the hijab. So I definitely struggled even when I first put on the hijab. Um, I remember I was in grade three, I believe. And that was the time that like girls in my class would start wearing like mini shorts and um, mini uh, skirts and dresses and they would have like cute clips in their hair and like that's the that's the age that they started like straightening their hair and the, the girls started to develop like puberty and all that kind of stuff and I felt like I was so out of that loop all of my friends would wear all these cute clothing and I would look and tell my mom like why can't I wear something like that um, why is it that I have to wear these like long sleeves and like pants and um, loose clothing in the summertime and you know being all fully covered up when my friends the same age as me are like fine running around in this other type of uh, way of dressing and I remember that was like a, a big concern of mine when I was younger and I remember my mom never really like said like oh you're a Muslim you have to dress this way or or this is just how it is like you just gotta accept it she was always she always used to just sit there and listen to my concerns and she would tell me um, as a Muslim girl we want to cover up because your body is special and you want to take care of it the same way you take a shower and take care of your body your hair all that kind of stuff you also want to take care of your image and the way people see you and the way people portray you and um, the way you portray yourself in public this is all something that is important to learn as you grow older and I remember I didn't really fully comprehend what that meant until later on of course because when you're nine years old you your attention span is very little and you also don't care about these kind of things so over time her um, her kindness towards me and towards the hijab and my struggle um, helped me realize how important the hijab was and it made me realize that on my own rather than someone drilling info into my head and expecting me to kind of hop on. That's not how it really works. When you force something, it's bound to explode later on. And you kind of have to develop this belief over time and this strength over time. Um, so I definitely want to mention that hijab is a journey. And I say this all the time. And that's something that actually I did not believe before. I used to think that hijab was something that you put on and it has to be perfect right off the bat. Um, it's a responsibility, a huge step that you're taking that must be perfect and it's a disgrace if you are not wearing the hijab perfectly and um, there's no point of wearing it if you're not going to wear it perfectly. That used to be my standpoint. I'm being completely honest with you guys. And the reason it was my standpoint is because um, society basically told me that. The Islamic community around me basically fed me that and I started to realize that it was a very toxic way of thinking because it discredits um, any sort of effort that is not perfect and that's an issue. If I were to go up to the sheikh or the scholar or whoever it is at my local mosque and I told them, well, I'm having trouble keeping up with my prayers, I can only do one prayer a day, the rest I just feel so lazy and I don't feel connected to my prayer and I'm just really struggling and this is all I can do for now, just one prayer a day. The sheikh or the scholar or whoever it is will most likely tell you keep trying, build your iman, research, learn, fall in love with Islam, uh, improve day by day, kind of try to do two prayers a day for a week and see if you can handle that and then increase it over time until you get to five. They will most likely give you advice that will push you to better yourself. Whereas when it comes to hijab, for some reason all of us forget this idea and this notion that Islam is about learning and growing we forget this notion and then if we see a hijabi wearing a turban for example or showing hair or wearing clothing that's not very suitable for a hijabi we automatically say take it off there's no point of wearing it just take it off you know and that's something that i see in my own community and we don't say this about prayers for example or any other struggle in islam but we're so quick to say it about the hijab and it kind of blows my mind because a hijab like anything else is a journey 
right? If that person happens to be at that stage where they're wearing a turban, let's say, and their neck is showing, a bit of their hair is showing, that's the stage that they are comfortable at right now because that is the level of Iman that they have, you shouldn't be telling them to take it off, right? You shouldn't be encouraging them to go backwards. If anything, you should be encouraging them to better themselves, to reach a better level, to help them fall in love with the hijab even more so that they have a stronger iman to take the next step and to improve their hijab. I think that's something that a lot of us as a Muslim community should reflect on and realize that we are so quick to judge hijabis and the way they wear their hijab without realizing that it is a journey. It definitely is a journey. The same way we see prayer, we would never tell someone that is only praying once a day to stop praying because that's not enough. You know, we don't say that because one time a week is better than zero times a week, right? And that turban or whatever that hijab that person is wearing is better than no hijab at all. So it's not about it's all in or all out. It's more about if you have one foot in, it's better than nothing in, in my opinion. That's how I see it. And I think that's really important to acknowledge because once you start seeing the hijab as a journey, it no longer feels like you are not enough to take part in this journey. If you look at the hijab as just the all in or all out, most people won't be all in. We, we, even me as a hijabi, I am not the perfect hijabi. And if I see it as just like, it's either you become the perfect hijabi or not a hijabi, I would most likely fall in the not hijabi because I'm not a perfect hijabi. And how does that make sense, you know? So you really have to reflect on the fact that hijab is a journey. What stage that person is on their journey is very personal to them. And the last thing a hijabi needs from anyone including their family members, their following, their friends, whatever it is, for them to make them feel like they are not good enough, they're not doing the hijab justice, and that they should let go of what 1% that they have or however many percent that they have. Some people wake up every day and struggle to put it on and walk out the door. It may seem like an easy task to do, but it really isn't. And alhamdulillah, there are some people that are super comfortable. I'm very comfortable with it and it's become part of my identity. But I know a lot of people who that is not the case for. And you got to really recognize that sometimes your little remark or your little um, advice that is done in a harsh way can really be very, very damaging to that person that's on that journey of hijab. Their iman level may not be at what you think a hijabi should be or what you think a hijabi should look like. But that does not mean you can discredit their effort. That does not mean you can discredit their hijab. It may not be the perfect hijab. It may not be the ideal hijab. It may not be the hijab that you're used to seeing or that you know is right. And that's totally valid. That's fine to have that opinion. It's okay. But it does not mean you should discredit that person for what they're doing. Um, advising the person is fine, right? But most advice is taken seriously from people you know close, that are close to your heart. So for example, if my mom were to advise me, I would 100% take it to my heart and try to implement it because my mom is everything to me. Whereas if someone random on the internet that has like a username of 0661 snarky larky underscore you know, Toronto something, and has no display picture, is about to message me and tell me, sister, I just want to advise you in Islam as a fellow, like, I can't connect to that advice. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to advise people, is that advice is usually perceived better when it comes from a close family member or a close person. And if you are not a close person, please keep it um, respectful and nice and loving um, because any, any type of advice that comes from a loving place is perceived way better than advice that is coming from a very hateful and spiteful um, place. The next thing I want to talk about is how we perceive hijab. Now, it's really important to look at how you view the hijab. How you view the hijab a lot of the times dictates how you feel about the hijab and how you practice the hijab. I feel like some hijabis tend to view the hijab as a struggle, as a disadvantage, as a burden, um, as something that they have to worry about and they view the hijab in a negative light basically and the only reason they are wearing it because it is an obligation from God. I am a sole believer that anything that is an obligation from God, a fard from God, um, something that you must do in Islam, has 
an immense amount of beauty and purpose behind it. There's nothing that we do in Islam that is that is mandatory, that is an obligation, that does not have a reason behind it for our own well-being. Okay, that's something that you really have to understand. So hijab being an obligatory part of being a Muslim woman, you got to understand that there is immense beauty in the reason why hijab is a thing. I'm not going to get too deep into why hijab is a mandatory factor of being a Muslim woman and why it is an obligation from God. Um, that's something that you guys can look into. There's a lot of YouTube videos. You can find a lot of sources on the internet. Um, just make sure they are trustworthy sources. If you guys have any sources that you would recommend, um, drop them in the comments down below. For anyone that's struggling with the hijab, this would be really helpful. Um, but what I want to say is that we really have to pay attention to how we view the hijab. Sometimes the way your mindset and your ideology of certain things, if you alter it slightly, you will see things differently. And I'll, and I'll explain to you what I mean. Many of you guys know that I took um, a major in health studies and a double minor in biology and psychology. So I took a class um, near my, th I think it was my third or fourth year in university. I took a class called Disability and Society. So basically my professor said something that I still remember to this day. And it's something that I think is really important to um, mention in this video. So when we look at disability, okay, someone that is disabled that term. Disabled means not able to do something. So let's say someone is in a wheelchair, right? And they're in a building that only has stairs, okay? And they want to get up to the second floor. That person is considered disabled because they are not able to get to the second floor. Now, if we put this person that is in a wheelchair in a different building that has an elevator and they want to get to the second floor, they are not disabled, technically speaking, because they are able to get to the second floor. What makes them disabled versus not disabled? So what my professor was basically trying to say is the society and environment around you shapes how you view yourself and others. So a person is considered disabled in an environment that is catered to abled people. In an environment that has stairs, only people who are quote unquote normal are able to navigate it because society is catering towards the normal people. And I say normal because normal doesn't really exist, but you know what I mean. Whereas if our society catered to everyone by having, for example, an elevator in a building versus just stairs, that person is no longer disabled in society. They are abled like everyone else, right? It's only their health condition that differentiates them between that person and the other. So what I'm trying to say is that sometimes it's not your condition or your situation that disables you per se, it is the society around you. And how does this relate to hijab? Okay, it's, it's weird, but it does. It's sometimes, it's not the hijab that's the burden, that's the disappointment, that's the disadvantage, um, whatever other description that you want to give it that's negative, it's not the hijab that is that. In fact, it's society that makes you feel that way. And that's important to realize because once you realize that it's the society that makes you feel that way, you no longer have this negative outlook on the hijab, just the hijab itself. And by not having that negative outlook on the hijab, it starts to allow you to strengthen your iman in the hijab and realize that the hijab is such a beautiful act that God has made mandatory for Muslim women. And it is the society around us that is making us feel like it is not, right? If we were in a society that was accepting, that was uh, promoting modesty, that was promoting the hijab, that, that made it feel normal, you wouldn't be having this issue with hijab because you're surrounding your, your environment would tell you that this is this is the way to go. Which is why a lot of people that live in Western societies find it a struggle to wear the hijab because a lot of people complain that they miss opportunities at work or they feel secluded um, at their workplace or in school they're the only hijabi in their class which makes them feel different or whatever, whatever, whatever. Like they can't participate in swim class because there's a male lifeguard or, you know, all these things. I, that's happened to me too. And that's made me feel like, 
shoot, like the hijab is what's limiting me, you know? The hijab is what's putting me in these situations. But in reality, it's not the hijab that's putting me in these situations. It's not the hijab that is the problem. It's the society around us and it's our environment. Sometimes it's not even as big as the society. Sometimes it's our close circle. Sometimes it's our friends. Sometimes it's the people we follow on Instagram that's making us feel this way. Sometimes it's our parents that can make us, or like some sort of family member that's making us feel this way. So you really have to pay attention to your surrounding and the society and the atmosphere that you put yourself in. Sometimes you may not be able to change the society as a whole. You're not going to be able to change the whole society to fall in love with the hijab. But you can start off as small as like, for example, your close circle, who your friends are and how they feel about the hijab or how they make you feel about yourself wearing the hijab. Do they make you feel left out? Do they plan around you or do they kind of uh, leave you out of like plans? They go, oh, we're not going to tell Jasmine because we know she doesn't drink and party. So we're just going to leave her out, you know, or like, do they talk about it badly in front of you or do they discredit you or whatever the case may be? You got to look at your friends. Beyond that, you want to look at your um, social media. How, who are you following? How do they make you feel about the hijab? How do they um, portray the hijab? Do they do a good job at making you feel good about the hijab? If not, it's a very simple task. You unfollow. You have the capability of catering who you're exposed to and what you're exposed to. That is power in itself. Once you recognize that power, you are in control. Trust me, if I see someone or something that I do not enjoy, regardless if I've been following that person forever, even if I know them personally, I either block, like remove them, or I restrict their account where I don't, where I no longer see their content because I don't need that type of information being subconsciously absorbed by me. Um, because I know it's not beneficial to not only my self-esteem, but also my Iman. And I know everyone claims to be strong and thick-skinned, but at the end of the day, messages do get absorbed and you got to pay attention to that. If I notice that, I am I'm not going to be involved in that and I don't want that to be something that I constantly see. I, t I remove it and that's that's the most important part you got to realize that your surroundings are super important and they often dictate how you view certain things in your life and how your iman is shaped you have to really really pay attention who you surround yourself around what society you're in what kind of environment you're in what kind of friends you have those all really matter. What your day-to-day -day activities are, if you're constantly surrounding yourself with negative things, you're gonna become a negative person, right? That's just how it works. And hopefully by paying attention to that, it will help you improve your iman and improve your outlook on hijab. It really has done for me. I've had to do a lot of changes in order to strengthen my iman and the hijab. And that's what I personally did and that really, really worked for me. Anyways, I don't wanna ramble on. Maybe I can make a part two about this and hopefully talk even deeper or like a different aspect of this discussion. I just wanted to start this off as an intro with you guys kind of like a little chat with me session and kind of open up the discussion with you guys So let me know in the comments below what you guys feel about this I really hope that this conversation was beneficial to you guys and as always I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye